Howdy y'all and welcome back. So if you watched my video the other day introducing this guy, I was I was I was wrong. <laughs> I misspoke a little bit. Uh, Taylor makes two versions of the smoke wagon, the standard one, and they make a Taylor tuned one, which is about 150 bucks more. This is the standard one. So all of the features and everything that I explained in that video is accurate, except for that this is not the higher end version. So that explains, I believe my quote was something to the effect of, I have felt better when I was working the action. And I was like, oh, it just didn't like dazzle me the way I was expecting. It's because it's not the Taylor tuned one. So <laughs> I ordered a set of Wolf Springs and we will do a spring change. So let's take it over the table and dig into it. By the way, if you aren't into watching the whole thing, scroll forward to the end to see the results. So looking at it closer, the timing feels really solid and the action is very smooth. It just has more resistance in the hammer than I was expecting because I was wrong. <laughs> so I've tried to think of some sort of scientific way of showing this and I came up kind of blank, but let me see if this weird method of using my offhand ring finger to pull it back And yes, I have snap caps in it. Trying to kind of show you the before and how much effort it takes to pull the hammer back. So now let me prep it and we'll get started throwing the new springs in. All right, so I just threw a little painter's tape over the back strap here. I have a bad habit of gimping it right there, but I'm gonna start with the bottom screw and just loosen it. A little. And next, we'll crack these back strap screws. Should be able to just yeah bring them on out like that Get my handy dandy little tray here. Thank you, Isaac, for sending those. I'll be giving some of these away. They're groovy little rubberized, little itty bitty parts keepers. All right, so now go ahead and do the bottom screw. And peel that off. And that reveals the main spring. All right, got my bits changed over here. So we've got a great big old screw that holds the flat spring on. And I'm just gonna loosen that a bit. Then I should be able to, nope, need more loosening. There we go. Can 
do that without fully removing it. If you fully take that off, it can boing on you a little. <laughs> so we've got quite a bit of the factory oil still down in there. So I should probably mop that up before I proceed. Now let me switch my bits back over and we'll get the bottom screws. Gently, since I'm giving this guy away, I don't want to gimp them. And those all broke free remarkably easy. If you're familiar at all with these guns, you know that if you're shooting them with very much volume, you want to check your screws periodically. They will walk themselves out. And losing one at the range is not cool. Uh, when I was shooting SAS, I would keep a full set spare because you will lose them. It just happens. Let's see if I can get that out with my fingers. All right. And this will reveal, yes. As suspected, a flat spring for the bolt there. And that is not what we want. So let me mop this up. Let me get a rag. I'm going to mop this up just a little bit. And then we'll get into that flat spring there. Whoa. And it's a little closer look there at the flat spring. I don't know why. Uberti still uses these. They break. They break a lot. It's very, very, very common, and it will shut your gun down. It will not work. And it seems like such a simple upgrade to use the round spring. But I guess if you want to be a purist, this is what Colt used back in the day. So I guess that's why they do that. And this is what we're going to be putting in in its place. It's a round spring. So there's your difference, and let's just go ahead and drop it right on in. And we're snug. So that takes care of that guy. And now I will spare you watching me put this back on. All right, so here is the mainspring that it came with. Here is the reduced power wolf mainspring. And it wants to ride just right under there. And these are always tricky to get back in. So let's see if I can. Get any love here. All right, and now Got it started, I'll go ahead and finish seating that down off camera, but you get the idea. So I got it all the way back together and the hammer wouldn't lock back. So I had to take the frame back off and I feel like this is worth showing on camera. What I had done is when I tightened down this screw, it ooched the coil wire off of the trigger 
and so I wasn't getting trigger return and therefore the hammer would not lock back into place. Now you can see it is locking and so the lesson there, sorry that's going out of focus, is to make sure that this spring is seated all the way over before you put the grip frame back on. So full transparency there, I goofed, but now we've got it corrected and I will get it back together. All right, and I got it back, back together, and even doing my dead level best using hollow ground screwdriver tips made just four colts, I still managed to round. <laughs> these, these screws are really soft, y'all, and if you're like me and you have a tendency to over-tighten the bejesus out of everything, try not to. I will probably order another set, complete set of screws. Might do some of the charcoal blue style if I can track some down and replace those before I give it away. But otherwise, we are back together, and it is much nicer. So let's do that weird, so I use my ring finger like I did before. That, it's very, very noticeable how much easier that comes back. And I've done... Wolf springs in all of my previous Uberties, and I've never had a problem with light primer strikes or anything like that. It's still enough, but wow. Also, let's see the trigger itself. Yep, it took out that tiny little bit of creep if you watched my uh, intro video on this. Oh, yeah. Definitely lighter pull and no creep whatsoever. I mean, it just, it's, it's, it's real light now, y'all. Like, you almost just kind of think about it. Yeah, that is beautiful. Outstanding stuff. <laughs> it's so good, y'all. If you have a Uberti or a Piata or whatever, well, well, well worth the money. The spring kit is cheap. I didn't bother doing it. It comes with a uh, spring for your ejector rod and the cross bolt deal. I didn't bother doing those. Just do the main two. And it's definitely worth having a proper set of hollow ground screwdrivers or tips like I have. Uh, and even still, I managed to gimp one screw, but these guns, they will, it's patina. <laughs> but I did manage to get it all done without scratching the frame, and that's probably a first. So the difference is so incredible. I don't, you birdie should just make them this way. It seems like it would be easy enough, but I guess that's why there's an aftermarket or whatever. It's just fine. It absolutely... It's just night and day difference. I cannot say enough. If you have, uh, same thing, I have Wolf Springs in the Rugers. Night and day difference. That spring job is a little more difficult, but not impossible if I can do it. So anyway, next up we'll be doing the full comparison between the Ruger and the Uberti. Until next time, be easy, y'all.